Brian Kaplan, editor of The Banker. With me is Godfrey Liebrand, the CEO of SWIFT, and we're previewing Cybos Sydney 2018. Um, Godfrey, it's going to be in Sydney, and very excitingly, SWIFT has just helped develop the new payments platform, the fast payment services in Australia. Can you give us a bit of an update on that and the significance of it? Mm -mm. So we're extremely uh, proud of that. We went live uh, with that, so that service is now up and running, which means that any Australian can make a real-time payment to any other uh, Australian. Um, we are also excited about the, the architecture between the banks with uh, an architecture that allows other providers to provide overlay service uh, on, on top of that. Uh, one of them is the database, the reference database that links phone numbers to bank accounts, so you can actually address somebody using their uh, phone number and get the, get the payment there. Um, for us, the wider context is we don't have just Australia. In November, we'll also be live with the European uh, real-time uh, payment system, two TIPS and RT1 run by, uh, by EBA, um, which will get us to the heart of the euro uh, area. So with that, we, I think we are a real player in, in real time and uh, making the technology work. And so is the idea to, to, to take that around the world to other countries? I, I think we, our idea is more to provide uh, linkages, so uh, one of the things is we have GPI, cross-border. We would like to find a way that you can, you can have payments that travel on GPI be delivered through a local uh, real-time system. We have that now where we have payments uh, that go on chips, for example. So chips is not on SWIFT and then they go back on, on correspondent banking. So I think historically we've been in the business of linking these systems with, with banks uh, in the middle. And our idea would be to do the same with uh, GPI, first link them uh, to, uh, to GPI. And then we have a pilot in Asia Pacific between uh, Thailand, China, Australia and uh, Singapore working with these real-time systems and the banks in those countries to see if we can give that end to, or if the banks can give that end-to-end -end real time experience to their customers cross-border including the currency exchange and everything that uh, that goes with it okay now when we talk about fast payments cross-border uh, I mean how fast do we really want to be because also when we go fast we also make mistakes fast <laughs> So first, the, the fast, if it, if it is to be the, the true experience, it, it needs to be seconds uh, at the end of the day. Um, and um, we're talking an environment which is retail uh, payments, so there, there are fraud mechanisms uh, around that, uh, obviously. Um, when it gets to cross-border, we're gonna, we're gonna, it's an interesting discussion to have in the context of GPI. You're, you're speeding up the payments, uh, but at the same time, that diminishes the time you have for uh, recovery. On the other hand, you have mechanisms like tracking, you know, have the UETR, we have a stop and recall system. Um, so at the same time, in case of fraud, it becomes easier to retrieve the money if it's, if it's fraudulent. And in, in our mind, those two go, uh, go hand in hand at, uh, at the end of the day. But the bottom line is, I think in this day and age, you really want to be able to offer as a bank to your customers a cross-border real-time uh, system, and then we're just gonna have to make the fraud management work uh, to make sure that yeah, it can be done at the end of the day. Okay, and if we go back to the new payments platform in Australia, um, which obviously you, you, you were the developer of. So, I mean, what are the biggest challenges in getting one of those things off the ground? I think the biggest challenges are actually inside the banks. There's quite a number, uh, quite an amount of work that banks have to do to enable this. They have to be able to credit the customer account in real time. Uh, they have to be able to allow their e-banking e systems or mobile banking system to initiate these things. They have to then have the systems to access uh, the, the, the mobile addressing database, as it's called, to, to uh, find a phone number, link it to an account, uh, and all these things. There's quite an amount of work to be done behind the scenes. And in Australia, that was the biggest amount of work that had to be done by, uh, by the banks to make it work from a systems and back office uh, perspective. I think from our perspective, it is, it is the network, the testing, and uh, etc. But if I look at the overall investment, the, fast, the vast majority of the investments was actually made inside these banks. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, in the UK with faster payments a couple of years ago, that was the same experience. It was a big investment for banks too. So okay, and you mentioned work. the uh, overlay services. Yeah. So does that mean we're going to see challenges and new players coming into uh, the new payments platform? Yeah, and, and existing players. I think uh, they're, they're looking at a number of overlay services in Australia, and it's a mixture of new players and banks wanting to offer their services as an overlay. Uh, so it will be a combination of both there. Yeah. Godfrey, thanks very much. Thank you.